Good morning, so everyone. Have their coffee. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. last month, but if you have not, bless you, if you have not signed up for the email list for this particular center and you wish to, I'm just going to pass this around. You can sign up for it. It just lets you know what events and classes and what's just going on here, okay? So I'll put this here. I'll pass it around and then you guys, if you want. I know some of you are already on it. So who's first time today being here? Yay! Yay! in the road get tough we are with you but we want you to stand up for yourself find your strength in these moments remember the core of your soul and the spirit of your light you are more resilient than your circumstances you are strong enough to endure to overcome to rise up we have not set you up for failure, for there is no failure. There is only learning with love. With each moment you surrender, you begin to feel love again. When it feels like you cannot move another day, this is when you must go inwards to your soul to see your strength, to see you are the hope of the world, the hope of your own life. When you're in your power, you exude the light deep within you. You only question when you are deep in doubt. We ask you that in these times you look to see that we are giving you the tools for the next steps in your life. The tools to overcome, to master, to the be the beacon of all change. Remember you are deserving of love, deserving of kindness, of respect, and most of all, deserving of destiny. 
Do not limit your destiny based on your fear. Do not let the little moments take over the big picture. The lifeline of lessons are here to help you shine, to help you believe in yourself, to help guide you on a path of greatness filled with magic, filled with love, and filled with amazing opportunity to connect and help others. <clears throat> If we remove something or someone from your life, trust us. Let go of holding on and surrender to the next steps. When you doubt your strength, your ability to go on, your belief in all that is, we ask that you close your eyes. Feel us around you. And remember, you are mightier than the circumstances you are in. They were chatting today, weren't they? <laughs> you know, you just sit there and you start to, uh, okay, okay, uh, oh, one more thing, okay. <laughs> um, and so we always follow uh, the message with a talk of the day. And so the talk of the day is usually inspired by the message, right? So it was really very natural. And it just happens to be about giving up, about, you know, what happens when we feel like we can't go on. Because we all feel that way sometimes, right? We all kind of go, why this or why this setback or what is happening? What did I do? Right? Where is the answer? And I feel like, when we can let go and trust and surrender and remember that we, are, we really are stronger than we realize we can overcome. So um, what we'll just do me a favor, Karen, will you let just, just let them know that we're doing a service? We are going to shut this down. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing, you're just really nicely. <laughs> Don't make me go out. <laughs> All, New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the question is, when is it time to give up, you know, to stop trying? Never, right? Never. Never stop believing. Stop beating yourself up over the mistakes, over the missed opportunities and regrets. We spent too much time, thank you, in the past and not enough time in the present. You know, we don't celebrate this beautiful life. How many times do you find yourself just looping through the past, looping through where you got stuck, and not finding a way to move forward, not finding that strength to say, wait a second. That just, because of that, that doesn't mean this is who I am at the moment. It has helped me, but I am stronger than that. I am mightier than that. I am more resilient than that, right? We get too busy sometimes in our lives to keep moving forward. Sometimes that stuck becomes a comfort zone. Stuck in what was, we reminisce, we romanticize, or we hurt, we stay in that hurt place. But each of these lessons that we have are here to move us forward. <clears throat> to kind of say, wait a second, here is that next step. Here is that next one. You know, your darkest moments may just be your greatest opportunities. They're your greatest opportunities to shine, to overcome, to show yourself that you are brighter than you think, stronger than you believe. It is these times that we can rise up and realize that someone's dream isn't greater than our dream. We are deserving of that dream, and we are deserving of what we want to manifest. We are powerful enough to manifest whatever we choose. So ask yourself, what are you choosing? And are you choosing fear, whether you consciously realize it or not? It starts with believing in yourself, believing in the vision that you have, and to never give up, persevering through the setback so that you can stand in your own greatness. The greatness that is within all of us. Good morning. Just have a seat in the back. Yes, that's okay. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
it's like an Italian dinner, right? <laughs> <laughs> but when, when we have these setbacks, when we have these question marks, ask yourself, how are you handling it? How are you responding to the question marks set before you? Are you letting it push you back? Are you letting it make you feel insecure? Are you saying, what was I thinking? No. Ask yourself, how do I rise over this? How do I get up? How do I keep going? You know, if everything were just here, if everything in our life were right up here, how would we learn and grow? It's when it gets low that matters. It's when it gets low that determines how much grit you've got, how much hope is within, how much belief and confidence in yourself to rise up. And it's what makes life beautiful. So again, we're going to finish with stop beating yourself up. Stop holding on to regret. Stop wallowing in something you perceive to be a mistake. And remember, in those dark moments is when your light can shine the brightest. So get out there and shine. <laughs> so we have our talk of the day, our professional talk. And this one, like I said, this one's going to be really, I think, fun. Um, do we have, let's just call it out, any single people in the house? Raise your hand. <laughs>
course, that's what you do when you're at a house in the country. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember pulling up this uh, bucket, and I knew that inside the bucket there would also be a message for me. So as I reached inside the bucket, I saw that there was a name inside there. It said Seth. Seth, I wondered. Remembering that question that I posed before, but Seth, I'm going to marry Seth? <laughs> it's ridiculous, I thought, because the only Seth that I knew was Seth Carver, and he was awkward and gangly, and he had red hair and freckles, and he had big ears and little teeth, and I could think of a million people. <laughs> so I obviously swore off this dream and this whole exercise, this whole crap, and I wiped the dream from my mind for many, many years. Now fast forward to 12 years later, and I was at the office, and I asked my office mate what she was doing for lunch. She said she was meeting a friend across the street. Uh, it's an old friend who had met Catherine once or twice. And before I even knew what I was saying, I invited myself to lunch with her. <laughs> so uh, when I got there, her friend was beaming. She had just met this new guy on a dating site. Uh, it was a site I'd never heard of called Nerve. And I thought it was worth trying, though, since she seemed to have such great luck with it. And a few weeks later, I was on a second date with a nice guy that I met on Nerve. And I brought him back to my apartment. Okay, I know, don't, don't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, my roommate uh, met him on his way out of my apartment that same night. Okay? <laughs> and she looked me in the eye and she said, you know, he's the one. I was like... How do you know he's the one? I barely even knew this guy. All I knew was that he was from New York, he was a writer, and his name was Seth. <laughs> yeah, years later I did marry Seth. <laughs> and I had received the message of who I would marry over a decade earlier. Yes, I, I had to be at that lunch because I had to learn about that dating set. I had to invite myself to <laughs> And yeah, my roommate was right. He was the one. So all this time, spirit had been guiding my path, though I was blind to the signs back then. Ah, speaking of signs, it's important also to look for signals and synchronicities when you're dating, just to define that. A synchronicity is anything that is a meaningful coincidence. But when you look for the signs, you'll realize that they're all around you. What is that thing that always seems to show up the moment that you're questioning your path? What is that number? that repeats at significant times in your life, or that song that you always hear right before things are about to change. Which symbols, signals, or words are repeated? When I'm on the right track with spirit, I always see dragonflies. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine always finds pennies, often in really weird places. <laughs> <laughs> but synchronicity also confirmed for me that Seth was the one early on. So before we met, I, I really had online dating down to a science. I booked about two dates a week, and I always went to the same bar down the street from my house where I could have just one martini and get home safe. It was called Lola's. So uh, before our first date, I decided since I was on a new dating site that I would maybe do things a little different. And I uh, decided to let the guy choose the bar for a change. Where do you want to be? I asked. And he said, Lola's. <laughs> I literally, I literally got that. And the sign was so clear. All of all the gin joints in all of the neighborhoods, in all of LA, this guy from Santa Monica had chosen my gin joint in West Hollywood. So it's not to brush this off as merely a coincidence, right? But looking back, it's clear that it was a sign from spirit that this date deserved my full attention. So you know that I'm a dating coach, but I'm also training as a psychic medium. Difficulty. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm making it my mission now to teach people to use intuition to guide them through your, their love lives in a way that I really couldn't when I was single. So if you're single, now I'm going to share with you my new system. <laughs> it's my new dating app method, which I call Swiping with Spirit. <laughs> there are 600 million singles online today. Most people spend less than a second looking at a picture before they choose whether to swipe left or right. Usually left. That means no. <laughs> and it's also no secret that most people swipe based on looks 
and attraction, initial attraction. Everyone tells me they're looking for chemistry, but I'll tell you, chemistry is a liar. <laughs> and every time if you sway based on chemistry, you will always lose out in the long run. Because the qualities that you need in a long-term partner, they can't be revealed by what someone says in a dating profile or on a first date. They won't reveal them to you, but their soul might. What if instead of swiping for baby blue eyes and a cute butt, instead you swiped checking in with their soul first? Whether you're an official psychic or not, we all have the power of intuition at our fingertips. We all have had an experience where we listened to that little voice inside that spoke up when the facts pointed the other way. So the next time you're swiping, tune into what that little voice says and trust it. So many clients say to me, well, my gut told me that this date would be a waste of time, but he seemed like a nice guy, or he had a great job, or I just wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt. But then they come back to me days, weeks, or months later, disappointed that they wasted their time. And time is your most valuable resource. It can't be renewed. So who you choose to spend your time with on a date, it really does matter. I could do an entire talk today about, gosh, how to have a perfect profile or how to flirt over text or what to wear on a date. But none of those skills are as important as tuning into the most powerful tool in your body, your own intuition. I'll take you through the first step that I start a client with uh, when they're doing a dating program with me. And you can do this actually if you're already in a partnership um, and looking to deepen the bond with your partner. So if you choose to, you can close your eyes, and I want you to visualize your ideal relationship. Not just what the mate looks like, but really, how does that relationship make you feel? How does that person complement your life? How would this person integrate with your family? Would you begin a family together? What kind of home would you create? How does this person help you learn and grow? And how do you enhance this person's life? Really see it. Really feel it. Let that feeling linger a moment and relish in the dream of your ideal relationship. If your eyes are closed, you can open them again. Just sit for a second. In that vision merge with the present moment. When I'm coaching, I even have my clients write down this ideal vision for the relationship on paper and really visualize what a day in the life of their dream relationship would feel like. So I recommend trying this exercise before you go on a date, even before you go on a date with your partner, uh, before you open your app and start, start swiping especially. Mm -hmm. Instead of looking for this nebulous idea of chemistry, look for that feeling to be repeated. Use your clear sentience, that little compass inside of you that tells you yes or no, to tell you which way to swipe. Open up to the symbols and synchronicities that have been trying to show themselves to you all along. And listen for that voice in your head that's trying to protect you from heartbreak or guide you towards the greatest love of your life. Because when you swipe with spirit, you always swipe right. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Yes. Yes. I'm going to be really honest, but at first she said, close your eyes. And I thought she said, imagine what the meat looks like. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I was like, and I was like, I was like huh? She says, mate, mate. <laughs> what does the meat look like? <laughs> so. That's <laughs> <laughs> what happens when you're listening to spirit at the same time you're trying to listen to a conversation, right? So you get a little fuzzy. <laughs> And now there's ringing in my ear, which is really uh, fun. Yeah. 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 So who's ready for messages? Yeah.
things around them. So we don't want to set us on fire. <laughs> so we're going to put that here. There are tissues, so if there are any tears and you see them, feel them, please, please be, if you're around them, pick up the box and hand it to them, okay? Uh, we have amazing mediums today. They are professional mediums. This is what they do, and it's beautiful. And what, let me just tell you a little bit about how they work so that we can just dive in without too much explanation that they're doing it, okay? So the mediums will primarily work in certain ways. They may see pictures, they may hear words or sounds, they may get feelings, all right? So what they're gonna do is they may then go direct to someone or they may do what we call throwing it out, okay? If you can connect to the information that the medium is giving, please raise your hand and claim you're a loved one. <laughs> <laughs> Loud and proud. <laughs> Even those that may have embarrassed you. <laughs> My uncle. Yes, it is. <laughs> All right? <laughs> yes, it is. Um, and even if there's two of you, don't be afraid. You know, if you can still connect and you can connect, keep going to it, the medium will know who to go to. Okay? If the medium gives a name, just remember it may be for someone in the living or in spirit, all right? Also, if you'll just take a moment and remember your own name right now. <laughs> yes, it happens. Maybe look down to see what you decided to wear today, okay? Because they may say the lady in the pink shirt, and I will tell you 100 out of 100 <laughs> times the lady in the pink shirt goes, <laughs> 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 Happens so much because we may have psychic amnesia at the moment, okay? <laughs> but just know that they're here. These are, you know, shorter readings, shorter sessions, shorter, but the connection is everlasting. All right? So I would love to introduce our first medium of the day. She is fabulous. She is a, a trained master teacher as myself to the Lisa Williams International School of Spiritual Development. I know it's a mouthful. Um, she works up in Ventura. She's got this beautiful loving essence that was so apparent when she is delivering these messages. And such a sense of connecting in a heart-centered way. And I am so happy she is my friend fellow colleague, and I'd love to welcome Karen Anderson. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm so honored to see all of you and all the angels and guides behind you. That's always a treat for me. Um, on my way here, it was so interesting. I saw four hawks. Um, hawks to me are a representation of the spirit world or a messenger. And I said, so I guess I'm going in the right direction. <laughs> and just as I got off the freeway, actually there was another hawk. Uh -huh. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> so when we speak about signs and, and um, opportunities for loved ones or angels to have turned to you, please don't discount them. Just take them into your heart and, and know that you're always being 24 7 spoken to connected with. And so with that, I'd like to kind of get this party going. Yeah. <laughs> I do have a woman here. I feel like she's maybe in her 40s to her 50s. I'm not really good on age. But she's saying it's our month. It's an awareness month. It's a breast cancer awareness month. So I didn't know that. I'm not sure that that's something that I know. But on the way here, I also did see the, um, the ribbon for, um, and it wasn't pink was actually purple, which for me is epilepsy, which my children have epilepsy. But um, she's showing me this ribbon right now, and she's telling me that um, she was a very big advocate for all survivors and those that were going through the journey. Can anyone connect right now just with that information? So I'm going to get a little bit more. She's a little shy with me, but she's very, very clear here today. Anyway, Sister Energy, breast cancer, 30s to 40s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and I do feel that she was a big advocate for it, but then I feel like she would 
tons of people, or people who are going through the journey, she was an empathic I understand. This makes sense to you. Yes. <laughs> uh-huh. I don't hear that. Yeah. <laughs> Very much. Interesting, because one of my aunts is one of my clients is in the Dark Matrix. Oh, so interesting. She is she she's telling me she drove down with me. So she came down from the um the Tarot County area. She drove down with me specifically because she wanted to bring a message as a hawk with it to you or to someone in the room. She's saying that. Keep going forward. Don't stop. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. And I feel like with her, she gave it all she had. She showed me, you know, gas, on the gas, giving it all that she could give. And she couldn't give any more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> she in the living room? This is yes. She's saying she's never going to change. Does that make sense yes. to you? <laughs> and she's sorry about that, but <laughs> she's going to go on with it all. They're out where they're at. I love them where they stand. And she understands her mouth more clearly than ever because there's a lot of insecurity with the sister. But what she is saying is that you just be you, and through your example, you're a great teacher. Does that resonate with you? Yes. She's also talking about water with you. Either you drink more or get in the water more. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Have you had a chest or anything with the chest? Anything respiratory, or did she have this? I feel like I can't really breathe very well. Um, I did as a child. You did as a child? Okay. And probably for her, and her in the end, yeah. In the end. Okay, let me go to you right now. Are you been having any trouble with respiratory issues? Or did you have? Because I feel like she was with you in hospital or at your bedside. No, okay, this may be for somebody else, so we'll just hold on to that. Just you never know. It's kind of like it's a puzzle. Put it all out there and then put it all together. <laughs> was she in the hospital? She was. Okay, so then this is what she's showing me at bedside hospital. Beep, 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 beep. She's also saying prayers and meditation and intention for her. With that, I can use a candlelight, kind of a candlelight. Do you understand what I mean? She's awful oh, energy. She's so excited to be here. <laughs> oh my God, and she's like, this is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> and I want TV. <laughs> she was a car. And she was funny. Um, is she in the middle or is that you in the middle? I'm in the middle. Okay. She's saying that you chose that to come in. She sees the lineup because you were the you were like the equalizer, if you will, in the family. And she said you being in the middle is such a gift to our family. She's also talking about that you're also the neutralizer for many people in the work that you do, in your life, in your friends, what have you. Do you understand what she's saying? Yeah. She's so grateful for your empathic energy. She's telling me she is a goddess, but she doesn't claim it. <laughs> your sister would have claimed it. Do you understand? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me out where she says that you claim it. Do you understand what she means by that? Spiritually, and just in essence of yourself, you're so beautiful. And she said you hide yourself a lot. Do you understand? She said, "Come on out. Don't come out of the closet." She's saying, "Excuse me." She's saying you have so much to offer. And do you work in like a bullpen area a lot? A big office bullpen area? No. Okay, this might be somebody else's little one coming through. Um, do you have children, sweetheart? No. These are her children then? No. Okay, this is Stephanie. Somebody else. Okay. What I want to say to you, with your oldest sister, I'm feeling that what your sister is doing from the other side is kind of softening her edges because there's something about her not having control or not being able to keep control. Does that make sense yes. to you? She has children. She has the children. Okay. Yes. Is there a niece you're really close with? Uh, that you no. Not you. Nephew. Okay. I feel somebody getting married or something, uh, a niece coming in. Something like that. Or maybe my, a great. My nephew is going to propose to his. She's so excited. <laughs> she can't wait. And also, there's a baby coming in a while. But there's a baby coming, and she's like, I'm anti babysitting until 
She's so excited. She's so excited. And she says, I want to tell you what the sex is. <laughs> she said, I wanted to be a surprise. She said, was you. The ring's gorgeous, by the way. She says, see the ring. So you've seen it too? I haven't. Oh. <laughs> I didn't leave with the pain. I left with the smile. I said, you know, because it didn't seem like she was. She, she was and wasn't. It's the body that was, but the memory, no. All right. Hmm. Yes, I understand. I just feel like I'm working on this side of the room. I just feel kind of like. Who on this side just took Colby's course? Anybody on this side? You did. Okay, because what they're showing me is um, a, a medium door opening. In other words, Someone has been schooling themselves. This would be you and you. Hi, how are you? <laughs> how are you? Yeah. You're so grateful that you took that leap of faith. I'm just going to put that out there right now. For both of you, especially for you, because you wanted to understand how your gifts work. Do you understand? Yes. Kind of like, I want to understand why I get these things or why I do these things. Or Does this make sense to you? Yes. Okay. I'm also feeling that you're going to take it even higher, go a little bit higher in your studies. I don't mean higher than Colby. I mean, you're going to oh. stretch out and really bring a lot of your spirit development to the forefront, developing you. Does that make sense? Yes. As you work for spirit. Yes. Okay. What's your first name? Eve. Hi, Eve. Hi. Would it be correct to say that you have always been a natural counselor, someone who always had the empathic ear, but it also has really wrecked your heart in a way? Do you understand? Yes. <laughs> like, I don't know how to get rid of that. Well, in my world, too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to get rid of what I just heard, not feel connected to it. And I think why they want me to talk to you is because my Archangel Michael said to me many, 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 many years ago, who you're very connected to, I can see right behind you, that be in an experience, not of it. See things as contractually playing out as they're supposed to. Although it makes no sense to us, it makes complete sense to the souls. You know, and it just comes from a feeling of what I want to say, sympathy or judgment. I'm so sorry that happened to you. When in truth, it could be their highest degree of sin, like Kobe said, the darkest moments. So what they're saying for you, when you start to step out more and do your work, really, really take care of the sacred heart you have, because you feel so deeply, especially for animals. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, you grew. <laughs> um, yes. Yes. Because um, I feel Animals seek you out. Do you understand? Yes. They'll come to your door. They'll come to wherever you're at. And like, <laughs> yes. Do you also like Kobe? She has this beautiful stand squirrel. Do you understand that stand squirrel? Oh, never mind. <laughs> she has a little friend named Stan, and he's a squirrel. When they're showing me that spirit always shows up for you in the animal kingdom, domestic and nature. So pay attention constantly. The hawks are as well for you. Okay. And I feel also that you've been working with Kuan Yin. Do you understand the name Kuan Yin? No. Okay. Kuan Yin is the equivalent, if you will, in the Eastern world to the Western world of the very. So Kuan Yin is working on your own uh, feminine energy, your compassion and passion for you, and all things that are attending your life, keep doing it. If they're not attend, let go. Don't feel bad about it. Don't feel, oh God, it hurts with these feelings because you are growing exponentially right now. Does that make sense? Yes. Michael of God said you could have left the earth about six to eight years old. Do you understand? I'm not sure. It'll come to you. Okay. It could have been the illness. It could have been an accident. He showed me you down like six to eight. He's always been there for you, will always be there for you. Don't worry. And what you're asking for is going to come. He's saying, time. You've been asking her a lot. Do you understand me? Yes. It's coming. It's coming. Okay. And what's your first name? Eve. Eve, that's right. Is there anything else? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
There's somebody that's going to be coming to you pretty soon. I feel like she's just recently lost either one or two family members. And she's coming to you, or he or she's coming to you because of your empathic connection. The family is definitely coming to you. I don't know if it's happened to yet, but you're the one they've chosen. And I do feel it's going to come spirit way. What I mean by this, just let go and let God work in. Mm -hmm. And when it happens, will you please email me? Somebody's going to come to you to want a message. You're going to hear it through the great mind. You're going to bring a message. I'm going to give someone a message. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somebody that's recently lost family members. Somebody's going to come and have lost I don't know, I'm have to give them a message. Absolutely. And you're going to be able to do it. <laughs> <laughs> is this what you're asking for? Do you have service and help? Yes. Okay. And so it is. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. Um, try. Uh, all right. You guys want some more messages? Yes. We have our next medium. Um, now. He just got done an event not too long ago in his hometown, so we have to give him a big welcome and applause for coming out of the spiritual closet. Yeah. Yeah. He's, uh, he's definitely done a few of the services, but we would love to welcome Zach Lowe today. to me to be, he's, he, he, he feels like an older brother, but like a mentor, like a teacher. Let's see what, let's get more into this. He feels like someone that you would have, from an early age, just sought his advice and just kind of like that person that's always going to give you like just real, direct, honest advice and just do you really well. And I want to say this is, let's go with older brother, and I'm feeling drawn to this side of the room. Can someone connect to an older brother like this on the other side? That's a, that's a maybe back there. Okay. Um, let's see here. And he's also shown himself to me as someone that probably would have had this role with a lot of people. I don't feel like it was just you. I just feel like he had that natural, that type of personality that just people gravitated towards. He was known for integrity, he was known for honesty, he was known for doing the right thing. Does this make sense back there? Okay, if we open it up over here. <laughs> 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 <Yeah. laughs> Does that have to be somebody you personally know? Yes. Uh, it does have to be somebody you know. Okay. This gentleman, let's see here, let's get a little bit more. I feel like he, um, I actually feel like he would have been um, a bit of a teacher. So maybe he wasn't necessarily just the teacher for you. He would have been a teacher for a lot of people. And I do feel like that would have been his role. And I want to say that he would have taught younger, well, children, not necessarily adults, but he taught children. So this would have been a teacher. Um, he would have been also a bit of a snazzy dresser. So let's see, would he have been your teacher? I want to feel into that a little bit more. Yes, if you feel like this would have been your teacher. So this would have been your teacher, not necessarily your older brother, but he was your teacher, he was a good dresser, and he was the kind of teacher that I feel like, especially the ladies in the classroom. <laughs> okay, can we connect to this teacher? All right. So let's see here. So maybe not the brother, we're letting that go. And we have a teacher who would have been like personable, would have gotten along with the kids, and you would have um, you would have learned a lot from not only from the class, but just from just from life in general. Can anyone connect to say having a male teacher as a kid who would now be in spirit? 
connect with everything except the relationship. Which relationship? The, the brother part? The or? brother or, I mean, he's a teacher. Okay. But okay. <laughs> but the snazzy dresser part. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, let's get a little bit more here. And I want to say that he, I feel like there was also a little bit of like some, some, some issues with him and like the administration of the school where they're like, what does he have to do now? What, you know, like almost getting in trouble a little bit for his, his, his more out of the box ways. Yes. Get to that. And let's see here. Interesting that he's coming for, for you and you didn't learn in his classroom. But I, I do feel like there was gonna be, there was an incident in particular where you had a situation with someone on the, the schoolyard and you, you gave, he gave you advice for that. Yes. And I feel like this was with another girl. Does that make sense? Yes. And I kind of feel like his advice was just, um, it was reassuring. It was, it, you know, you were believing some things that this girl was saying. He's like, no, you kind of set me straight. Does that make sense? Yes. And why he's coming forward for you right now, I think you're finding yourself in that similar sort of role where, you, where people are kind of looking to you for advice. Yeah. And it almost feels like, hey, I'm, you know, I'm still around, I'm still here, and anytime you want to channel my energy, I'm here for you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I am seeing now a woman who is showing herself to me to be on the she's showing herself to be in her child child years. And I feel like this would be someone's sister. And She's showing herself to me as um, loves to eat. <laughs> That's how I say. Can someone connect to having a sister on the other side who loved to eat, not to eat? That makes sense for you. Okay. All right. And it, the feeling I'm getting from her is she the other, but it kind of feels like. A relationship where you were like equals. Does that make sense for you? Toward the end, yeah. Toward, toward the end. Okay, great. And she is. Um, I'm seeing sort of doing something in her garden. I feel like there was a garden that she tended to. Um, does Does that make sense to you? Her having a, it doesn't make sense having a garden. Okay. Um, would it make sense that you have a garden? I'm definitely seeing a garden, and I'm seeing. Does that make sense? <laughs> and uh, let's see, what is this about a garden? I just see. Oh, this could be back to childhood, actually. Um, I'm seeing the two of you in this this garden, kind of playing, kind of getting messy in the dirt, which doesn't make a lot of sense. I feel like kids are normally. You can take this for your sister. Okay, and does the part about the loving of food, the loving of people, the, the, the warm energy, and the garden makes sense for you how? My father had a garden and we had to work it. And you worked <laughs> in the garden? Okay. All right, okay, that makes sense. And this is when you were children? Yeah. Okay. Well, keep listening, maybe there's probably going to be some things in here for you, too. Um, okay. And it kind of feels like it was a mix of working and playing in the garden. Like, I can kind of see, like, yes, it was work, but it kind of feels like it was fun, too, for you. Does that make sense? Kind of. Kind of. I'm seeing, I'm seeing the two of you kind of, like, almost throwing dirt on each other or just kind of, like, play fighting in the garden a little bit. Can you, that doesn't sound like it. Okay, but, the, but being in the garden, working in the garden does make sense. Okay. And then, I, I just feel like there were just a lot of fun experiences. Like I'm being drawn to a memory with water slides. And I do you recall going being water slides with her. And I want to say that it feels like the two of you would have um, kind of ridden down the water slides together, like in tandem, doing that kind of thing. Water slides not making sense back here, I'm guessing. Okay. And it almost feels like, um, like the two of you together could just like get lost and just enjoy enjoy the day. Like you don't need anyone else. Just the two of you would just like 
happy together. We were, we were each other's best friends. And I want to say that um, I feel like she left behind a husband. Is that correct? Uh, she had an ex-husband and a long-term boyfriend. And a long-term boyfriend. Okay. I mean. All right. And I feel like one of those. Um, and I feel like one of these gentlemen. I feel like this would be the, the long-term boyfriend you're actually still in touch with, and I feel yes. like you're friends with. Yes. And I feel like um, there's like still communication with him about her. And she very much appreciates that. It's like she loves that she's still remembered, that she's still considered to be a part of things. And because you both know that she's still very much around. And I feel like you get signs from her quite often and you're aware of this. And I feel like there's like this dialogue between you two where it's almost like your relationship still is evolving even as she's been on the other side. And um, what she wants to say to you is, even though like you had this conversation with her and it's involved in different ways, she's saying, look out for the way I'm gonna surprise you next because it's not gonna be with something that we've done before. It's gonna be something unexpected and you'll be like, boom, that's her. And it's gonna catch you off guard. And I will do with that. She's like, yes, yes, <laughs> and always says yes to spirit. And her level of dedication and service is just unsurpassed. And you will see with her humor, she's got quite the vocabulary, though. I will <laughs> say, sometimes I have to go, <laughs> but she was a teacher, so you can see they communicate in a whole different level. Um, but I would love to welcome. Susan Shore. That's so funny. I love mediumship so much that by the time it came time to introduce me, I was like, oh, I'm here for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, I mean, yeah, every word you guys were saying was just awesome. awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see who else wants to come through today. <sighs> Okay, so I have a grandmother stepping forward right now. She feels to me like she is, I was about, okay, so I have a grandmother coming through. She's on your mother's side of the family. She feels to me like she's telling me to stand up straight. She's a very proper woman. It's funny, I'm wearing a crinoline because I feel like she might have dressed this way at one point because she's kind of pointing it out to me uh, that she remembers the feeling of this. Um, but I feel like this was a period of time that she would have definitely very, very much enjoyed. I'm drawn to this side of the room as I'm saying this, so I want to say the grandmother in spirit, mother side of the family, very proud. I can't believe my hands. I just feel like you know, she's, she's very uh, well put together. Does anyone understand this? Grandmother, mother side of the family. Okay. Possibly. Okay. Um, sorry, guys. Keep listening. I'm going to come back to you in a second. Uh, okay, so I feel like I'm rather trim. I feel like my shape is, I'm proud of my shape. I, I feel like I took good care of myself. Do you understand this? Yeah, I never met her. Okay. She passed the course. Okay, do you know things about her? Yeah. Okay. Do you understand this? Okay. Because I do, I feel like it's very important about the way that I present myself to the world. I feel like I actually have a lovely stage presence. So I don't know if she spent time on the stage, but I do. Do, do you understand this? Okay. <laughs> okay. Because I do. I just feel like this is mom's mom. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Oh. This. Okay. Uh, <laughs> coming through. All right. So I do feel like she's she's telling us all to sit up. Okay. Would you understand why she would do that? So I feel like that's the type of lady she was. I also feel like 
she would have had a very good vocabulary as well. Do you understand? If somebody said to her, I feel like I'm yes. very, she's telling me to slow down because I can tend to talk too fast. So she's telling me to slow down and be articulate with my words because what she's about to say is very important. Okay, so you understand why she would talk like that. Okay, I was told when I get when I feel emotional, I'm supposed to just keep talking. So right now I'm just gonna keep talking to get the emotion away. So anyway, so what she's telling me is this is a very she understands this is a very challenging time for you right now. She wants you to know that just like I said to you the other day, she does it in circle with me, is that she is behind your mom right now. She wants you to fully comprehend that. And I feel like what she's saying, much like your sister or not on my watch, she's saying the exact same thing. And I feel like this is a lady that when she was alive, you did not cross her path. Do you understand that? Oh, yes. Okay, and this is what she's saying. She's like, oh, no, no. She's like, I've got this. I'm, I'm taking care of this. I'm putting my foot down. I feel like she's kind of like stamping her foot, just making a real point about this. And she's like, but I have to be honest with you right now. What's been going on with your mom as I'm holding her right now is it's been lovely because we've been so connected and I've been so sharing with her and I've been really heart, mind, soul connecting into her right now. And she wants you to know you're so concerned with what's going on with mom right now, but what she's saying is, I don't, don't take this the wrong way, but she's like, I've been lovely and lovely. This has just been, it's like it's healing your grandmother as well as it's healing your mother. I mean, your grandmother, she really has got a lot of healer in her. Yes. yes. Okay. I mean, she's like, I, I just feel like she, family was so important and, and being upright and all of that was so important. And I just feel like this is a woman I want on my side. And she, she's telling me that she's on your side. Oh, yes. Yeah. I mean, she, she's, she's a little forced to be reckoned with. But I also feel like, you know, she's also showing me she's stretching a dollar bill. Do you understand this? <laughs> There's money, and I just feel like I make more of it. Oh, yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, and I feel like she's kind of talking about you with this, okay? So she's letting you, the primary reason she's coming through is to just let you know she's holding mom. Okay, that's the yes. first thing. The second thing she wants to do is she wants to talk about you and money. Yes. Okay, and she's talking about stretching, and she's saying this is Eve stretching. Stretching. So in other words, you're stretching your dollar, but you're not stretching it enough because you keep cutting it. So I feel like what she's saying is there's a little bit of spending that you're doing that you shouldn't be doing. Would you understand why she's saying that? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because what she's saying is like you're, you're doing everything that you're supposed to be doing. Like a good girl. Yes. Okay, she's like that. But she's like, and then you kind of go, well, I'll just do this a little bit. Do this a little bit. <laughs> so I feel like what grandma's saying is, She's a very practical, pragmatic person, and I feel like what she's saying is it's really important to have a nest egg. Yes. All right, she wants you to have that nest egg. Yes. Oh, she's so cute about it. It's a Fabergé. Is it those, those, those fancy eggs? Okay, so she's got this fancy egg. And what she's saying is when you crack it open, more money's going to spill out. Has she been in investing? Um, yes. Okay, because I'm like, why else is she showing me all these weird different... Yeah, so I feel like what she's saying is really she wants you to start investing more than you've been. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. Um, and I feel like what she's saying is like start putting it away before you even feel it. Uh, completely understand. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> okay. Um, your grandfather, her husband, kind of stands behind her. Do you oh, understand okay. that? Yes. He stands very quietly behind her because yes. I feel like he was very comfortable with letting her leave oh, the show. Yes. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I feel like he's a strong man. <coughs> I mean, I do. I feel like, um, wow. He is very powerful as an intuitive. Did you know this about your grandfather? Yes. I mean, I feel like his intuition right here was like a powerful ball. That's the only way that I can put it because that's the way it shows. And I feel like what he's saying is you share this similarity. All right? So you've got this powerful ball right behind your third chakra. And it's like you can, you can absolutely like use it to help people. And I feel like what he's saying is right now, though, it's very much important that you're putting it back on yourself. Okay? And I'm just going to, I'm going to leave that with you. But I just want you to know the two of them, you've got two powerful cheerleaders on the other side. And they're like, we've got this. <laughs> Don't you worry about a thing. We've got this. And then I see your sister holding your hands. 
Thank you, Sam. I'm just going to leave that one here. She's still telling me to <laughs> um, <laughs> So I have a gentleman coming through right now, and I'm more drawn over here. Um, the word uncle is coming to mind, but I'm not positive if he was an uncle or if he was just somebody who kind of played the part of an uncle. Um, yeah, he's got like a silly element to him, so I'm not sure. You know how some pe people that are aunts or uncles who never have children, I'm like one of those people, it's like they have this sillier side to them. So I feel like this is a, this was an adult man in your life when you were a child who had a sillier side to him. Um, I'm not sure if he had children, but he just feels like he doesn't have children. Um, so I do feel like he may have been like the inappropriate jokes on my finger, that kind of uncle um, or uncle character. I also feel like this gentleman's connected into your dad. Do you understand this? Yeah, this is not the Chico. Okay. Was <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Chico your dad's brother? This is my grandpa. You're, oh, okay, okay. Because I definitely feel like I'm on dad's side of the family there. You're young, Uncle Chico? <laughs> I like this guy. <laughs> I think he is a funny, funny man. And it's funny, I'm drawn to your jacket right now. Yeah. And I feel like he's saying, nice shot, I like this jacket. Do you understand why he would say that? Oh, yeah, because there would be two women in each <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. That's why, okay, so it's kind of interesting why he came really close because sometimes when spirit comes close, Sometimes they get a little too close. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Okay, so I'm going to go with my bed rest so we get to it. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, but I like this guy. I feel like he said what he meant, and he meant what he said. He wears hair on his sleeve. Do you understand that? Okay, okay yeah. I always oh, so funny too because when I do this, he's like, yeah, that's good. <laughs> so I don't know, did he really have good biceps or is it just in his mind? Well, see, Uncle Chico was in the military at one point. Uh, at some point, my because I think you were talking about my grandpa and I as well, because uh, he was there with Elvis. Um, so both of them kind of have. Okay, because I, I definitely feel like, like he, okay, because I just feel like he, he points to, to me his arm, and then he's kind of like, you know, I had it going on. Yeah, because right. there's literally a photo of him with two women and his biceps right there. Okay, that's <laughs> it. Okay, yeah, because it is, I'm just drawn to this. Um, yeah, he definitely felt he had it going on. But he's so cute and charming about it, he's not egocentric. You know what I mean? It's like there's some people that you're still magnetically drawn to, even though they're like, you know, he had that going on. So he's just, he's still very charming about it. Now, I also feel like, it's funny you say he was in the military, because I don't particularly feel that was, I didn't like taking directions. Do you understand that? Oh, he just smoked weed and hung out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like that was the period of my life that I particularly liked. Because I didn't want other people to tell me. I feel like I did my time. That's kind of the way he puts it. But it was always like, I just want to go out. And I, he shows up with like these big wings. I just wanted to spread my wings, get out and around, do things. I also feel like there's such a social aspect about your uncle. I feel like he could talk to anybody about anything. He could talk to the wall. Do you understand that? Oh, that's not exactly right. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he's funny about it. And I feel like even though he had that real flippant side, he also was a really solid, strong friend to a lot of people. I feel like this is a man who would have taken a bullet for people. Do you understand this? Oh, yeah. Uncle Chico and my, my grandfather, Zeke, were... Yeah, I do. I, do. I just feel like he's that type of person. He kind of had the philosophy of you take care of the people who take care of you. It's like once you earned his loyalty, you had it for life. And it's interesting because as I'm saying those words, I'm drawn to the, the similar similarities between the two of you. All right? I also feel like well, he's kind of joking. He's just like, yeah, you're a character too. You know it. Okay? But he likes that. He's like, that's the way. Much like what Colby was saying earlier about shining and allowing yourself to embrace that. He's like, that's the way to be. He's like, you know, I, when I, after I cross, I don't have any regrets. And he's like, that's the way to live your life. Oh, yeah. All right? Yeah. And then that's exactly what he's saying. He's like, don't have any regrets. It's funny, like what Colby was saying, how I always say yes when she asks me here. I feel like that should be like, if he was going to give you one thing to do for the rest of your life, it's like anytime anybody asks you something, say yes. Mm -hmm. All right? Just don't even question. Just say, yeah, I'm in. Let's do it. And then figure it out later. Because I feel like that's kind of the way he did his life. And he's like, it always kept me on my toes. And I feel like my brain's really sharp even at the end. Do you understand that? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I learned to ask from that man because he came in. My favorite moment of all 
Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. We don't have time for that. I'm sorry. <laughs> sure, later. Um, but I just want to say that he is just saying, say yes to everything. And I'm just going to leave that with you. I love I do want to <laughs> not too long ago, thinking about her. Is that correct? Always. Okay, thank you. You would understand her being very particular in her ways. Does that make sense? You understand that? Not so much. Um, she gives me this feeling of wanting things done a certain way. You can't connect to that? Hang on. Do you understand this? Not really. Okay, I'm going to open this up. Oh, Hang on. Yes. Uh, see, I, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm gonna you. Okay, so yes, to everything. <laughs> <laughs> so now, hang on. Now you understand her bossiness or a little bit of this particularness. Yes. Okay. Thank you. See, we just, you know what? We just gotta sit there and get in here. Mm -hmm. I feel like I was right here even initially. Yes. So she gives me this feeling as well. Almost like this posture, though. So there is something about this of, like, she size people up. Do you understand that about her? Just by the look of her. Just go, oh, well, let's see if they're kind of, mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Really high standards, I feel like. I feel like she had high expectations, high standards. Do you understand yes. this as well? Thank you. She also gives me this feeling, though, but I do feel like she understood, like, to get things done. I think she really enjoyed getting things done, knowing things had to be taken care of, and she was really good at executing all of it. You understand that? Thank you. She also gives me a, a fact of, would I be correct that there is a brother for you? Is that right? Because she, okay. Because she, and there's two boys total. Is that correct? Okay, because she acknowledges the boys. Um, would you also understand the sister? Is there two boys and a girl? Is that correct? Okay. She, she says, we can't leave her out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like she's talking about that. She also gives me this sense around her. Um, would you understand either like a Margaret in the family or an M-A-R -M being connected to the living or in spirit? And it could also be a middle name. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, thank you. What, whose name is that? Can I ask? It's a Mary. Okay, who would Mary be? Is that her sister? My cousin, no. Oh, okay, the cousin. Thank you. Um, she also gives me this feeling around, okay, thank you. She also gives me this feeling, is there a D also, like a David, or some? Both. There's, oh. There's a, my brother is David. Okay, thank you. <laughs> hey, so, again, she's acknowledging these kids. I thought she's, you know, I, I like her for participating. She gives me this <laughs> She's, you know, she's. You know, she, but this is how she was. You know, if it needed to get done, we are going to go ahead and do it. And we're not going to sit there and make excuses. We are just going to go ahead and get this done. Do you understand that? 
And I do feel like when she steps forward today, it's to tell you, you know what needs to be done. So just go ahead and take care of business. And to let you know, you know, just how proud she is of you, of where you are and what you've been doing. And all, okay, oh. <laughs> it's gonna get sensitive here. She just says she's so proud of you for opening up your heart and, and for giving that love to others that you've been giving and for helping them. And she just says, you know, sometimes you have this strength. She says, but it is your heart that I love the most. Mm -hmm. So I'll leave that with you. <laughs> your morning with us. I know that there is, you know, all of you could be doing something else at this time, and yet you chose to spend time with spirit, with friends, with community, and so I do want to thank you for supporting the space, for supporting spirit and one another. Um, I also just want to give a huge shout out to my friends, my colleagues, to the amazing volunteers today who gave their gift, who gave their time, uh, because it would be no service if they were not of service, right? So it, it just, it takes, it takes a, uh, what do they say, a village. And, and I am so honored and happy that uh, there's such an amazing village here today to support. So thank you guys so much. Um, a couple of amazing events coming up that I just want to mention quickly. Uh, Damona, as you know, our dating coach actually has a podcast called Dates and Mates, and it is every Thursday at 11 a.m. It's on the UBN radio network, which is uh, where we do my podcast. So that's actually how we initially met. So Dates and Mates every Thursday at 11 a.m. And Susan... Actually, uh, you know, she wore the perfect outfit today uh -huh. because she's actually having a Halloween psychic party. Ooh. So that is October 25th. You work on your abilities. It's kind of fun, right, Susan? Yeah, kind of a fun thing. It's October 25th. It's a Thursday night, so make sure you do that. Um, in the space here, just want to mention this Thursday night. It's an Akashic Records workshop with Erin over here. And we also, in October later, the 20th and 21st, is an Intuition Two-Day Workshop with Yusan. And that's an entry level. There's a couple people who've taken it, and they just seem to love it. So we keep having to come back. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then for anyone who's looking to develop, I have the circles coming up. I think you guys know in November. Last but not least, in November on the 10th, is a sound bath and spirit message evening and it is with mark david who is a renowned sound healer and he's amazing karen do you have any events coming up for me to mention no okay you've got the um up in your area though you've got the uh love from above coming up though right um it's spice token. Spice it sold out oh it is sold yeah. so that's it that's what you yeah. <laughs> so Again, I just want to thank each and every one of you. Our next service will be 11-11. So you have to come for that. And, and thank you guys so much, and have a beautiful day. Okay? Thank you. Thank you.